In this video, we're going to take a look at our conceptual massing forms and how to add parameters to these massings that we create. We're still going to start with our massing template file. I'm going to open this up just to give me my work environment. We're going to start with a small rectangle. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to click on my level one. I'm going to just sketch a simple rectangle. I'm going to escape out. Now I'm just going to highlight this rectangular form that I've sketched on my ground plane. Once it's highlighted, I'm going to come up here to create form again. Create a solid form. Now that Revit has given me my temporary dimension for height. I'm going to scroll in, zoom in a little bit here. I'm actually going to click on this dimension, which hard lines the dimension. I'm going to deselect. Now I'm going to select that dimension. And once I have that dimension selected now, you'll see up here in my options bar, as far as label, right now I have none. I'm going to click this drop down and add parameter. It's going to bring up this parameter properties menu. Right here we just want to focus on adding a name which I'm going to specify this to be height. I'm going to leave type selected as well as family parameter up top and I want this parameter to be grouped under the dimensions since for height and we're going to create a width and length as well. I'm going to click OK. And now you'll see Revit has modified my dimension string to read the parameter equals 50 feet. Now let me zoom out a little bit with my wheel. I'm going to come up here to my properties. And I'm going to click right here for my family type properties. And the height is currently 50 feet. But let's flex it with this new parameter that we've added. And I'm going to make this 100 feet. And just and just click apply and you'll see the height of my massing has been transformed to the new parameter value that's been typed in so this verifies that our parameter is in fact working you do want to get accustomed to flexing these parameters that you establish so that you can verify which parameters are in fact working for you so now I'm going to go ahead and come up here to my create tab and I'm going to click align dimension which we'll use for conceptual massing the primary difference that we're going to make in creating an aligned dimension for conceptual massing forms is we need to make sure our dimensions are from face to face so I'm going to click my align tool hover over this face until the perimeter of this face is, is highlighted I'm going to click here then I need to make sure that I hover over the other end. If you see now, you can see my back face of this rectangle is now highlighted. So I'm going to click again. Drag it out. Right now it's 50 feet. I'm going to escape out and deselect this dimension string. Now I'm going to select it. Now it'll bring back up my options bar. And I'm going to add another parameter. As far as a name, we're going to give this the name width. Still family parameter, affecting justice massing family, a type. And we're going to include it once again in our dimensions group. So click OK. Now you'll see this dimension reads width if I zoom in. Let's go ahead and flex our width parameter and I'm going to turn my width 120 click apply and you'll see what Revit actually did is apply that additional width to my dimension but actually the extension happened to the back face. 
that's important if I want this dimension to actually occur on both sides of my reference plane then the way we attack this dimension would actually be different so I'm going to go back let's say we want our dimension to make sure that this object actually flexes on both sides of our work plane well that means we need to add one more constraint to our model before creating a parameter I'm going to click on my align dimension tool I'm going to select this face then I'm going to select the work plane that I want to center the object on and then I'm going to come and select that back face again. I'm going to drag this dimension string out. I'm going to select this dimension string, zoom in just a little bit so you can see. I'm going to hit equals so that I make sure this object is actually centered on this vertical work plane that I have here. Now I'm going to come back to this second dimension string that we created first add parameter again now I'm going to recreate this width parameter everything else looks good I'm going to click OK now it's 100 feet now let's try coming up here and flexing our width parameter again Let's change this to 50 feet actually. I'm going to click apply. And you'll see that the change actually happens centered on that work plane. So, in order to create a constraint that modifies the model in a particular direction, sometimes it's necessary to actually create a second dimension string that adds an equality constraint and that's what we're doing here with this first dimension string that we've created and then the second one controls the overall width of the massing I'm going to create a length parameter as well back up here to create click on my line dimension tool again I'm going to now click on this face I'm going to hover over let me zoom in and I'm going to click on my back face again deselect my dimension string reselect it for the label come down to add parameter going to type in length for this parameter we do want to make sure that we are as specific as possible when naming these parameters if you know that you're going to have multiple length parameters then you're going to need to be more specific than I am being in this simple form click OK Let's come up here to our properties panel and flex our model one more time. For the length, we're going to say 80 feet. Click apply. Now we have flexed each of our parameters the length, width, and height and they seem to all be working for us I hope this helps